those of you who are here, at St Stephen's, and those who are connecting with us today uh, virtually too. And I hope you've all had a, a nice, uh, quiet Christmas time. And may I wish you all God's peace and blessing throughout the new year. There's only two notices. The first is that at the 11 o'clock service this morning, we're saying a formal goodbye to Nat Coxon, our current children and youth worker. Uh, Nat's going to work in Chesterfield with uh, an organisation called Blend. Um, she will continue to be part of the congregation at 11 o'clock and be helping um, as a volunteer um, with the youth worker. With the youth work. Um, if you'd like to sign the card that there is uh, for Nat at the back, please do that uh, before you leave. And then secondly, um, we're going to follow the order for Holy Communion from the Book of Common Prayer today. We should have a green booklet. It's going to be the said service, and I'll give you all the prompts and the page numbers, where we are on each page as we go through. So let's keep a moment of silent prayer together. Chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Praise for spiritual blessings in Christ. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be the holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined for us to, for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were locked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is the deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel, according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory, glory to you, to you God. God. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was very disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests, and teachers of the law. He asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly 
and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may too go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us start off with a prayer. You were born to us in a stable and came among us to save us. Let us remember as we move forward in our own journeys that you took a journey in your life too, Lord, one with so many bumps and jumps. Let us think of that day and remember when you and your family were given gifts to remind us what a journey could be. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning, first of all, to everybody. I hope you had a good break, and no, I don't mean a physical break. I was thinking about today, how much do we know as we celebrate the arrival of the kings, magi, magicians, rising in fact, how many kings were there? Were there in fact kings, magi or magicians? Where did they come from? Obviously, apart from our scriptures saying there were three definite gifts, maybe something for you need to think about and thought and reflect upon as we leave today. So what can we think about these three gifts that Jesus and his family were given? Always an idea, just your take old idea. So gold. I'm sorry, I'm a very pure, poor curate, so it's all I can find with these gold coins, and they will be shared for the floor also. But what does gold mean? Well, for some people it means wealth and power, but not in this context. In fact, if we look through the Old Testament, we see it being used for those who are kings, such as Solomon, where he would only drink from golden vessels. But Jesus is not that sort of king. He will all have the world to reign, yes, but his kingdom will not be one of power and wealth that those around him thought he would have, i.e. to remove the Romans and those who are ruling them at this time. But his kingdom will be one of service, giving each one of us a chance for eternal life, if we but accept him into our lives. As we see from our reading from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, 15, Jesus went to Galilee for preaching the message of God. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. And then, frankincense. Frankincense was used in the Jewish religion as a prized incense to God, a sacred blessing to praise prayers to God, as it's written in Ecclesiastes in Exodus chapter 30. God spoke to Moses, take fragrant spices, gum risen, onica, gabion, and add pure frankincense. Make the spices in equal proportions to make it an aromatic incense. It will be for you the holiest of holy places. When you make this incense, you are not to copy the mixture for your own use. It is holy to God. Keep it that way. Whoever copies it for personal use will be excommunicated. So I don't want to see anybody using practice at home. This again was a very highly priced item. And very expensive, but only to be ever to use to God to make him sacred, and showing us the importance of his gift to Jesus, making those around him aware that he is sacred and he is God at the same time. And finally, no, it's so expensive today that a 
kilogram of this costs 500 pounds. 500 pounds. It was used as a gun prison, as an antibiotic to stop decay. It was used when somebody died to prepare their body when they were going to heaven. It was used, certainly, it was certainly used for Jesus' body and was placed in the tomb. Look at St. John's Gospel 19. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus at night, came now in broad daylight, carrying a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. They took Jesus' body, and following the Jewish burial custom, wrapped it in linen with the spices, thereby signifying when this gift was given to Jesus that he would die for us all, and however he would come back for us as well. So looking at these three gifts, we can see how they relate to what the baby Jesus was to become and the journey he would take and how important he was for us all today. Final thought. As some of you know, I lived in Central Europe for a long time and the festival of Drei Konin, or Three Kings, is a really big festival with cakes such as Galette de Roi being baked and shared with the one who finds a bean or a plastic Jesus inside it being given a paper crown to wear all day long. So instead of a prayer to end this reflection, I'd like to use the prayer and liturgy of the Central European Church to use. There's a copy of this at the back of the church for you to take home if you would like to, as in she, that's sure. And it reads, It's an ancient Christian epiphany tradition for families to gather to ask for God's blessing on their home and what's going and who visits it. Chalk is used to write a traditional symbol on the door frame, the doorstep, or close to the door, along with prayers asking Jesus to visit and be present in that house. It's marked by using the year 20, then C and M and B, representing the traditional names of the three wise men, kings or magi. Casper, Melchior, or Balthazar, as well as the Latin words Christus, Manchumo, Benedicta, may Christ bless this home, with crosses between them representing the cross of Jesus and the year ending with death. And it finishes with a prayer like this Jesus, visit this home. Bless any everybody who lives or visits here with the gift of your love. Help us to show your love to each other and all those around us. Accompany us in our journey today. Amen.
the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>